Аккуратно, сам туда не лезь. Артур, я с тобой? By the end of the year, France intends to keep its promise and transfer 600 high-precision AASM bombs to Ukraine. Brotherly assistance for the Ukrainian armed forces was confirmed through the official account of the French Ministry of the Armed Forces. In addition, the department stated that it will expand the production of these shells, taking into account national needs, and for deliveries to the Ukrainian Air Force. According to plans, the production of these highly effective ammunition will increase to more than 1,200 units by 2025. Aviapro writes that the AASM bombs weighing 340 kilograms are equipped with a GPS and INS guidance system, which means that they have high accuracy when hitting ground targets. This aircraft projectile was developed for fighters such as the French Rafale. But experts say that the MiG-29, Su-27, and F-16 will also fit. With the help of the guidance system, the AASM can carry out pinpoint strikes on fortified objects and equipment. In France, they say that such military assistance will be a serious support for Ukraine in the current conflict. The AASM's modular design supports different bomb weights, from 125 kg to 1000 kg, and includes an aerodynamic extension kit with winglets and a rocket booster to increase range. The AASM, also known as the Hammer, is a versatile French air-to-surface weapon developed by Safran Electronics and Defense, suitable for both close air support and long-range strike missions. This smart weapon is modular, allowing it to be configured with various guidance systems according to operational needs. The most common version integrates a hybrid inertial navigation system and GPS for guidance, achieving high accuracy with a circular error probability of about 10 meters. For enhanced precision, variants equipped with infrared or laser guidance can strike targets within one meter of accuracy, even against moving targets. In the temporarily occupied Sevastopol, a car with a Russian occupier was blown up. As it turned out, it was the captain of the Russian Black Sea Fleet Valery Trankovsky. He died at the scene. This was reported by Russian media and local telegram channels. A video from the scene was also shown online. It is noted that the explosion in his car killed the chief of staff of the 41st Brigade of Missile Ships and Boats of the Black Sea Fleet, Captain 1st Rank Valery Trankovsky. He was 47 years old and, in particular, he participated in the invasion of Ukraine. The media reports that the ships of this unit carry out missile strikes with caliber and Malakit missiles. It is reported that the explosion and fire of the car occurred on Taresa Shevchenko Street. An explosive device was detonated in the vehicle. The liquidation in Sevastopol of the captain of the first rank of Trankovsky a successful special operation of the SBU, reported sources in the security service. According to sources in the special services, as a result of the explosion, his legs were torn off and he died from blood loss. 
Trankovsky is a war criminal who ordered the launch of cruise missiles from the waters of the Black Sea against civilian objects in Ukraine. In particular, he bombarded Vinitsia with caliber missiles in July 2022. Then 29 civilians died. In addition, he is involved in shelling of Odessa and other cities, as a result of which civilians were also killed. It is known that the occupier's legs were first torn off by the explosion. Eyewitnesses pulled him out of the car, but he died from his injuries. Former Ambassador of Ukraine to Britain, ex-Minister of Foreign Affairs of Ukraine, Vadim Pristaiko, believes that Britain is one of the countries that will not leave Ukraine in its fight against Russian invasion. He admitted that the country may agree to deploy its troops in the demilitarized zone between Russia and Ukraine if a decision is made to create such a zone. The diplomat said, said this on Oboz Revitel media outlet. This is how he commented on information from the Western media that US President-elect Donald Trump's plan to end the war may involve placing European and British troops in Ukraine in a buffer zone between the armies of both sides. However, as Pristaiko emphasized, Ukraine should adopt a law on the admissions of Allied armed formations to the territory of Ukraine. I want to remind you that our allies differ from Russia in that we have to invite them to our territory. A law is passed for this purpose. It must be passed at least in order to create legal grounds. For example, if the president of France said that he is ready to do this, then let's invite immediately. We heard from the British Prime Minister that they are ready to do this. For example, to send their instructors and we will immediately make a decision. The Verkhovna Rada will vote and invite our friends, our brothers, our allies. This is a normal way, the diplomat said. He is convinced that the partners will support any decision of Ukraine, both if the country wants to continue fighting and if it wants to look for ways to negotiate. If we want to fight and are ready to fight, our friends will help us to fight. If we want and are ready to look for ways of reconciliation, find compromises, we will be helped to look for this way. This is only our decision. We have suffered so much during all this time and that no one has a right except us to accept the decision, added Pristaiko. We will remind that the Telegraph, citing sources close to Trump, writes that the newly elected US president may propose to create a 1,200 kilometer buffer zone, which will be provided by European and British troops to separate the Russian and Ukrainian armies within the framework of the plan to stop the war.